Hi everyone. Today we'll be covering some game mechanics. And I can get a little bit dry as there's not really much to show game-wise. We'll be looking at the game difficulty of 7 Days to Die and some of the big areas where the, the different difficulty settings impact your game. Whereas many start playing with Nomad difficulty because that's the default, eventually with experience it might simply be too easy for an experienced set slayer. So as you start increasing the difficulty, you might be wondering what does it really do? How does it really change your game? The game doesn't really explain it. There's no specific mention of what it does except that it makes it harder. But you probably have some vague inkling that it probably makes the zombies harder to kill and it probably makes them more da dangerous, making them hit harder. And that's one of the big things that it actually does. So let's pull up a table to review. And I do want to note that these have changed across the version. The base of the table is from Alpha 14 and I have to credit Silent Thunder on the 7 days forum. But it's been updated with some of the zombie damage testing I did for Alpha 16 in, before this video. With the introduction of the insane difficulty level, it's actually gotten even harder in the last few alphas. While I've tested out the zombie damage percentages to player, doing the verse is a little bit harder to be exact without being able to see the zombie hit points, which of course we can't. But the rough results I have from my testing indicates that they're pretty accurate. As can be seen, Nomad is the standard. The player takes and deals 100% damage from Zeds. As we make it easier, going down to Adventure or Scavenger, we see that the Zeds hit for down to half damage and they take half as much again damage from the player. When we go in the other direction and make it harder, we see the reverse and more. With a normal zombie dealing 10 damage on Nomad, on Insane it's a whopping 25. That's still survivable. However, bear in mind that for instance zombie bears do normal damage at 50. On Insane, that's a whole 125 damage. Armor as I covered in the previous video then becomes not just good to have, it becomes almost a necessity to stay alive for more than a couple of hits. Going beyond damage dealt and received, difficulty also has an impact on something else. And that something else is the calculated game stage. A quick review of how a game stage is calculated is probably in order. There is the calculated function and there are the modifying variables. The calculation differ based on whether you're a solo player or whether there's a group of players within a certain distance because the game considers them a party and thus pretty much combines the game stage across these players. From looking over the function, we can tell that the impact of the game difficulty on the game stage is higher on the lower days survived count, as later on it matters a lot more what the days alive difficulty bonus is, but at least the first few weeks your game stage can be significantly higher on insane difficulty than it would be on Nomad. So how does this matter? Well, the short story is that as game stage goes up, the spawn hordes progressively become harder. Game stage now impacts the wandering hordes, it impacts the sleep hordes, screamer well, or the scout hordes, as well as the blood moon hordes. The only outlier in this is that the wandering hordes seem to wrap at game stage 50, whereas the rest continue up into the thousands. It makes it seem to me that the wandering horde system is almost random as it'll wrap at 50 and then just start over and you can't really easily determine it in advance. Let's take an example. Let's look at Blood Moon Horde of Game Stage 1. It basically spawns one zombie from the Feral Horde Stage 1 and then one from Zombies Night. And that's it. Pretty much what a level 1 player might be expected to see. Further note that it's just normal zombies in that group. On the extreme end, we have a total of 1500 zombies spawned and it can go up to 256 concurrent zombies at a time. And again, that depends on what the other game settings that regulate max zombies if they allow. A cross-reference to the group being used shows a lot of very nasty zombies being randomly chosen. There's a lot of ferals, cops, whites, and radiator zombies. Now naturally, to reach the top of the game stage calculation, you need to be high level, at a high day survived, and probably be in a game party. At that time, the game stage bump for insane difficulty is not going to be very significant. It will bring the game stage higher, but again, it's not going to be very significant. A more reasonable comparison would be, say, having a game stage of 280 on Nomad versus 540 on Insane, and that's something I recently had. The lower game stage horde has a single feral, but it's mostly just normal zombies. To contrast this, the higher game stage has multiple ferals and they're spawning at a higher probability and it even includes a zombie cop. And of course, beyond the horde being composed of more challenging zombies, they also do 250% damage 
and they only take a quarter of damage from the player on insane difficulty. That makes them a much larger threat to the player. Overall, I think it's great that they're moving away from the difficult level just increasing or decreasing damage dealt and taken, and shifting it towards a greater impact in whole composition and quantities. Maybe they can find further ways to make it impact, such as maybe giving better tier loots as a reward for killing these high level zombies. Maybe more advanced AI that the zombies will be utilizing. So there you have it, a brief walkthrough of the impact of game difficulty on your game. So what game difficulty do you favor when you play 7 Days to Die, and why? Do tell me in the comment section below. Also take a moment to subscribe, because that really helps me out. Until next time.